Assume that a grocery store cashier spends between one and 10 minutes with every customer. You can think that this cashier need to greet the customer. He need to say hello, and at the same time need to say, have you found everything that you were looking for, or whatever. But he needs to spend at least one minute with the customer. And from one minute to 10 minutes. And assume also that this time is uniformly distributed over the whole interval, one to 10 minutes. And with this information, I would like to answer the following question. What is the probability that, that he spends less than five minutes with the next customer? If we want to answer this question, it will be a good idea to know how is the probability density function. Let's try to make a graph of this function. So first, obviously, we need the Cartesian plane. So here will be the x-axis, and here we have the y-axis when we are going to draw the values for the fx, f of x, that will be the, the value of the probability density function. But what, what we know from this problem, we know that the random variable x go from 1 to 10 minutes. So the time that the cashier spent with the with the customer is between one to 10 minutes. So will be the value of X will be between one and 10 minutes. And we also know that this variable, the time is uniformly distributed. And what does it mean that it's uniformly distributed? So it means that the probability in any interval of equal size will be the same. So, for example, the probability that the time is between 1 to 2 minutes will be the same that the probability that the time is between 2 to 3 minutes. So, it means that these two rectangles will be of equal height. So, we made the histogram. The histogram will be made by rectangles of equal height. So, if we continue in the same way, whatever uh, interval that have the same base will have the same height. So if we continue in this way, whatever rectangles I do of base of the same base will have the same size. So for sure, the histogram, if I complete a histogram, will be formed by rectangles like this. And at the top of the rectangles, we're gonna see the probability density function. So the probability density function will be like this. Okay, let's draw, will be a, a, vertical, a, a horizontal line. Let's draw this, this uh, probability density function. So we have like this, uh, we have the y, y and x axis, and the probability density function will be a horizontal line. And these horizontal lines, it will be between number 1 and 10. So I just draw this vertical line here just to see the limit of, the, of this function. But the function is actually this horizontal line between 1 and 10. And what is the probability that these customers, of, sorry, this cashier spent between 1 to 10 minutes with, with the customer? So will be all this area here. So all this area forms the, the probability that the customers ex or the cashier spend with the customer be between one to 10 minutes. Okay, now let's see if this is all the probability. This is actually the 100%. Right? This is actually a 100%. And 100%, we know that this is equal to 1 in terms of probability. So this is 1 here. And what we know about this rectangle? We know that the base is between 1 and 10. So the base will be 10 minus 1 equal 9. All this length here in this rectangle will be 9. So we know the, the length of the base is 9, 10 minus 1, all this distance. And the high, it will be easy to compute. Because if the, if the length is 9, 
and the area here, complete area is 1, and we know if we multiply the high times the base, the answer must be the area, must be 1. So for sure this number here, the high of this, of this rectangle will be 1 over 9. So let's see, 1 over 9. And if this is the high, so we know now the value of this of all these points, yeah? So we know the value of f x, f of x. So f of x will be equal 1 over 9. So this will be the value of the probability density function, and it will be between 1 to 10. Yes? So x will be between 1 to 10. Okay, so now we are ready to answer the questions. Because the questions say, what is the probability that he spends less than five minutes with the next customer? And he spend between, uh, he spend, uh, if we want to find this probability, okay, so what we need to do is just draw, only find the area between one and five. Let's do this in another graph. So we need to, this will be the area that we are looking for if we want to, answer the question. So what is the probability that he spent uh, less than five minutes will be this area and this area will be very easy to compute. So let's answer this question. Probability of x less or equal than five. And so that means that I'm looking for the cumulative probability. Yeah? So the probability until five. And it will be this area will be 1 over 9 multiplied by this number five, that is, will be 5 minus 1. So 4, 5 minus 1. So if we do that, we use your calculator, and that will be equal 0 0.4444. So it will be 44.44% the probability that this a cashier spend less than five minutes with the customer. So, so every problem will be uh, similar. It will be uh, something very similar to this. It depends on the question and it depends on the what will be the interval. But we, we from this we understand that the problems related to a continuous uniform distribution will be easy, easier to solve. Just uh, reduce to compute the area of a rectangle. We can use the information of what we have learned in this exercise to study in a general way this continuous uniform distribution. Let's see. What is the main characteristic of this continuous uniform distribution. First, the probability that the random variable that follows this distribution falls in any interval of equal length is the same. So it means that if I want to, to make the graph of the probability density function, obviously we need a Cartesian plane, but we are going to know that there is a, a lowest value for the variable, let's call it A, and it will be a higher value, value, uh, value for the variable, let's call it b. And with this a and b, also we can make a histogram of the variable, or if, if we make a histogram, a histogram or whatever histogram for this, for data that we collect from a, a distribution like this, we are going to see that the rectangles will have the same height. And this is because the probability to fall in any interval of the equal length is the same. So the height of this rectangle will be equal to the height of the rectangle beside it. Or actually, if it's equal to whatever rectangles you made of this distribution. So that means that if you join together all, all the roof of this, these rectangles just to draw the, the density function, so the, the, the result will be a, a horizontal line like this. So let's forget about the histogram. Whatever function, uh, or whatever data set that follow this continuous distribution, we have a, we have a, a density function like this. Yeah? 
value A and B will be the determine the base of the rectangle. So we have we're gonna have a rectangles. The whole area will be below or inside a rectangles, and the rectangle will be between the two values that we know, the, the lowest and the highest values possible for this variable. So, so here inside the rectangle we have a hundred percent of the data, so we have one. So the area of the rectangle in terms of probability is one. So it means that if we know the area and we also know the base, because the base for sure the length of the base will be b minus a. So we have the information for for the for the for the area of the rectangle and also for the base. We also going to have the information for the for the height. Of the rectangle and the height of the rectangle for sure need to be 1 over b minus a and why because if you multiply the height times the base the answer need to be 1 so if this is b minus a this need to be 1 over b minus a and we have found the definition of the density function for the continuous uniform distribution. The density function fx will be all the time, we have always the same value, 1 over v minus a. Let's type this. The, the density function will be 1 over v minus a. And on for what values of x? The values of x will be between two values, between a and b. See? So that completes the definition of the density function of whatever continuous uniform distribution. As you see that, that is exactly what the previous problem taught, taught us. Yeah? Let's see the, what will be then, if we have this, what will be the cumulative probability function. The cumulative probability function is the probability that the variable has is lower than lower or equal than a special value. So let's see if we make this a special value between a and b, the probability that the variable be between or lower than the, the value x will be the, the, the area of these rectangles here. And the area of these rectangles will be also easy to compute. Now that we know the high, 1 over b minus a, and multiply by the base, and the base will be the length of this base is x minus a. So the probability, the cumulative probability, the probability that the variable will be lower or equal than a value will be 1 over b minus a multiplied by x minus a. So we multiply by x minus a, and now we can make this multiplication one times this and the answer is x minus a divided by b minus a and this is the 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 formula that helped me to compute probabilities there are two more good news we have a formula for the mean we have formula for the expected value and also we have a formula for the variance the formula for the expected value or mean is this be a plus b divided by 2 so we get the average of the two boundaries so with this formula we are ready to answer the questions that I have at the beginning of this video how long I spent in front of this of this red light in average so because this red light if two minutes red light, two minute red light, so we know that the, the the smallest time or the shorter the shortest time that I can wait in front of this red light is zero. So A is zero. So I, I cannot wait lower than zero. Eh? And the highest value, the highest value for the waiting time is two minutes. And that happens when I arrive exactly at the moment that the red light is starting. So at this moment, so I need to wait for the two minutes for this light to change. So in average, I am waiting in front of the red light, zero plus two divided by two. So I'm expecting one minute. If I have been, one minute in average, if I have been waiting, 
1,000 times in front of this red light, I have been waiting 1,000 times, 1,000 1, minutes in front of the red light. And 1,000 minutes is a time enough to see several movies, yeah? Okay, there, there, there is another another good news. Yeah? We have a, a, a value for the variance. Obviously, I am expecting in front of this red light sometimes two minutes, sometimes 1.5 minutes, sometimes 1.1 minutes, sometimes 0.2, sometimes 0.1 minutes. But in, in average, how much? And is this, but the, what is the variance? The variance will be this. Sigma square will be B minus A square divided by 12. So in this case, will be 2 minutes, 2 square, 4 over 12 minutes. So one third of minutes will be the variance for, for the situation of the waiting time in, in, in a red light. Okay. That concludes the explanation, the introduction for the continuous uniform distribution. But I will it will appear in the, in this website more more uh, uh, related more videos related to this to this uniform distribution. First, we're going to have also some 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 problems, and at the same time, we're going to have. The, the proof of how these two formulas are really true. Okay, let's see this in another in other videos. Thank you.